Hello everyone. Today I am going to present our paper, Code It, Code Editing with three based neural models. This paper is published in Transaction of Software Engineering in October 2020. This work is a collaboration between Columbia University, United States, and Microsoft Research, Cambridge, United Kingdom. I am Shoika Chakraborty presenting Code It. Before moving into this paper, let us talk a bit about the motivation behind this work. Software developers change their source code for a different purpose. For instance, they edit code for adding new feature. They edit code for bug fixing and also for refactoring. As it turns out that these code edits are very repetitive. That is, the developer reuse same pattern of edit in different contexts over and over again, which leads us to investigate is it possible to automate such repetitive code edits? Let us see how we may design such an automated system. One possible way is to manually write edit templates, then search for the template code in the code base. Once a match is found, the, apply the corresponding patch. However, such approach has one problem. These templates are usually handwritten and very tedious to write. Also, the efficacy of this approach highly depend on the code search and the template matching success. Another way to solve this problem is to learn such edits. In this solution, we train a machine to learn code edit patterns from example edits. After training, the machine takes in the before edit version of the code and translate it to the after edited, edited version. And thus the machine applies the code change pattern in the process. In particular, we can use an encoder decoder model with a code encoder and a code decoder. Together, they can learn the edit pattern from the example edits. And once the encoder and the decoder learns the edit pattern, they can apply the pattern in similar contexts. Now let us look how the encoder and decoder works. The encoder takes in the code before the edit and generates an encoded vectorized representation. The decoder then generates the code after edit from those vectorized representation. A simple way to use such encoder decoder based architecture is to use sequence based encoder and decoder. This sequence-based encoder and decoder treats code as a sequence of tokens. However, such treatment would cause certain problems. To understand the problem, let us put a closer look at how the decoder generates the edited code. Since the decoder we are talking about is a sequence-based de decoder, it generates the code as a sequence of tokens. That is, it generates the code with one token at a time sequentially. However, there is always a chance that the decoder can generate one wrong token in a certain position. And that is the problem because one wrong token could make the whole edited code syntactically incorrect. And no matter how correct the system works after that, the whole edited code is practically useless. Thus, we ask this question, is it possible to edit code with guaranteed syntactic correctness? To solve this problem, we design CODIT, which is a tree-based encoder-decoder model. CODIT first extracts the syntax of the code of before the edit. CODIT then translates this syntax tree to the syntax tree after the edit. And finally, CODIT translates the edited syntax tree to the edited code. By generating the syntax tree, code it guarantees that the edited code is syntactically correct. Now let us look a bit in depth into working process of code it. Code it works on two step process. In first step, code it translates the structure. And in the second step, code it generates the edited code. To translate the structure, code it converts the syntax tree before the edit 
to a sequence of production rule in the context-free grammar of the corresponding programming language. Code it then translates the rule corresponding to the code before edit to the sequence of rule corresponding to the code after edit. From the sequence of rule that is generated corresponding to the after edit version of the code, Codit takes one rule at a time and expands the syntax tree in leftmost derivation fashion. Codit expands the next leftmost bottommost non-terminal node in the syntax tree to expand with the production rule. If a rule head does not match with the non-terminal to be expanded, Codit simply ignores it. Codit stops when there is no more non-terminal to be expanded, that is, the code is full. So translating a sequence of production rule, code it essentially translates the tree structure of the code. However, the edited structure is not complete yet. Since we only generated the structure so far, to complete the code, code it still needs to generate the identifier corresponding to the terminal nodes. Thus, we design an auxiliary token generation model which we restrict the token search space based on the terminal node generated by the tree generator. For instance, when it comes to the terminal return, the only possible token is return itself. In case of variables and method names, we do scope analysis to find the reachable variable and methods in the edit context. And we restrict the search for variables and methods to only those variables and methods that are reachable in that context. We evaluated Codit on two different datasets. First one is generic code edit from GitHub containing 48 projects and more than 32,000 edit examples. And the next one is pull request edits with three projects and more than 5,000 edit examples. We evaluated Codit against two type of baseline model. First type of baseline is sequence to sequence based model uh, consisting of three baselines. The first is LSTM based sequence to sequence model. The second one is abstract sequence to sequence model which is proposed by Tufano et al. And the third one is sequencer model which is also an LSTM sequence to sequence model with copy attention. To understand the tree-based modeling, we compare Codit with a tree-to-sequence-based model where, which uses a tree-based encoder to encode the code before edit and the sequence-based decoder to generate the edited code. Codit's promising result over the sequence-based baseline show that the effectiveness of tree-based modeling over the sequence-based modeling. Codit's performance over tree-to-sequence-based model is, shows that it's not sufficient to encode the input code with a tree. It's also necessary to generate the code with a tree. We applied Codit for bug fix uh, edits. Out of 80 bugs in defects for the dataset, Codit successfully fixed 15 bugs completely and 10 bugs partially. And the graph shows how quickly Codit can generate patches that passes the bug reproducing test cases. And within 20 minutes, Codit generated patches for 50 bugs that passes at least the bug reproducing test cases. Now let us look some of the examples that Codit successfully edited. Codit can add a statement. It can add or change the access control modifier of a small function. In case of deletion type edit, code edit is particularly useful since while deleting a fragment of code, deleting just one or two tokens may not be enough. A certain portion of the code may have to be deleted to maintain the syntactic correctness. And code edit has shown immense promise in learning API change edit as well. So in conclusion, the takeaway from points from this work is Syntactic correctness can be guaranteed through sampling in the context-free grammar space. And Codit's ability to generate syntactically correct patches can be a very powerful tool for automatic program repair. I thank you for listening to my talk and I will be very happy to answer any questions you may have.
Okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, I'm the session chair, Aisha, um, for the session Deep Neural Networks Supporting SE Tasks. And uh, it's this is our first Q&A for the paper Codit, Code Editing with Tree-Based Neural Models. And uh, Saikat is here with us uh, for uh, answering your questions. So if you can just write your questions to the chat, uh, you would be happy to answer. Um, while waiting, I can ask my questions and then, okay, the first question arrived. So here's the question, is the approach for static code, how do you consider dynamic control information? Um, thanks, Sridhar. Um... So to answer to your question briefly, it is a static code. And um, in this approach in CODIT, we, uh, we do not address the control flow graph or data flow graph. We only consider uh, the syntax, syntax tree. Uh, so the control flow graph is not present in CODIT's approach. And uh, since it is a static graph, the dynamic control information like the control flow and data flow and various dependencies, those are not present here as well. I hope that answers your question. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can ask one question. Um, so this uh, technique, um, you tried it with the automated program repair. Um, right data sets and uh, especially with defect for uh, for j which is a very popular data set for this particular field uh, did you compare your approach with some baselines or state of the art that was implemented on defect for j and uh, how, how was it compared so, to yeah um with respect to the baselines uh, mm -hmm. we did we compared with other um say other uh, say new NMT based uh, approaches for uh, program repair. Uh, uh, for instance, we compared with the uh, sequence to sequence uh, based model and we compared uh, with the sequencer model. So while CODI uh, works comparably, comparable. Um, with other baselines like sequence to sequence model or um, sequencer models, mm -hmm. code it can be viewed as a code mutator tool. Mm -hmm. uh, in generate and validate based program uh, program repair approach, uh, the main way to do code repair is to mutate the code and try the mm -hmm. mutated code for uh, whether that passes a Test case code it can be viewed as a uh, learned mutator. Mm. So okay. that that uh, there goes the main novelty of code it. And um, mm. like to answer to your questions uh, fully, um, it works comparably well with uh, say sequencer model, which is another NMT based um, program repair tool. Yeah. Okay. So we have um, two more questions. Um, so a follow-up from uh, Sridhar, how many code edits would contain dynamic information in your data set? Do you think considering such that of information could be an overkill or is it okay to ignore it? What's your take on this? So uh, my take on this is that uh, for smaller edits, for example, uh, when you, uh, you have to change just uh, one or two tokens, it could be an overkill. However, um, the experience that we had, although we did not consider the data flow or control flow analysis here, the experience that we had is that um, since uh, such data flow or control flow information, at least in some uh, in some form, could actually uh, help narrow down the search space for searching for different mutations. So I believe this is my conjecture: is that such information could help, but uh, of course there are more research needed to how to incorporate such information in an effective way. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, um, question from Giovanni. Does CODIT also check for changes that can affect other parts of the software? Does it keep the behavior of the software in regards to the test suites uh, that accompany the software? Uh, 
so currently uh, when we uh, treat code it we treat code it as uh, the code before the change as uh, uh, in isolation so we do not really uh, check for whether the the mutated code actually changed the other part of software uh, to guarantee that in the later uh, later part of the paper where we check uh, the mutated code with this suite to make sure that whether that's uh, the mutated code is not breaking other part of the software that is is not uh, actually failing other test cases already passing test cases but the core approach of the credit uh, code it uh, does not really care about what is happening on the other part of the software it uh, treats the uh, code as in isolation I hope that answers your question. Okay. Um, another question is uh, from Jordan. Is the representation code its encoder learns any good as a general embedding for code? Or is it really only useful as input to the decoder? Um, so I do not have an exact answer to that because we did not evaluate such embedding uh, mm -hmm. on other purpose, if that's what you are asking. Mm -hmm. uh, but one thing for sure, uh, the such embedding, uh, say one might ask questions, why do, did we go for uh, say the grammar based in embedding in the encoder mm -hmm. side? So our conjecture there is uh, since we use the attention based neural attention based neural machine translation when the input and output the representations are homogeneous it's easier for uh, the model to put attention to different part of the input uh, but that could be an interesting uh, experiment to see whether such embedding is um, extendable for uh, other tasks if um, that could be a very uh, good research direction, I believe. Yeah, uh, following that also, uh, I know, for example, uh, ASTs are used uh, to learn certain embeddings for other tasks. Uh, so for predicting, for example, vulnerable parts of the software. So I guess those embeddings that you learn from the encoders uh, could be useful because it captures the syntactic information in the end. So. Right, Abs absolutely. So one thing I can add here is that, say, coded is a two-stage two model. First, there is the tree, tree translation, so there is a tree encoder, and then there, mm -hmm. is, a, uh, there is a token encoder. So mm -hmm. it is. it could would be interesting to see uh, what each of the encoder is doing, what each of the encoder is uh, breaking. Mm -hmm. Say, for example, if some bug or vulnerability is uh, dependent on the structure of the code, not the not the specific token, then the encode, uh, embedding from the encode, tree encoder might be useful or mm -hmm. maybe vice versa. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from the audience? Um, I can also fill the uh, fill the uh, space. Uh, so in your uh, presentation, we see the um, uh, comparisons between your models and these uh, sec to sec models, LSTMs, and uh, sequence R, etc. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you showed like 15% uh, improvement on the on the uh, performance, right? Mm -hmm. Right, um, but what uh, earlier what you mentioned was like the sequence based encoder decoders. They um, so if they um, do a mistake, make a mistake on one token, the rest mm -hmm. of them also goes wrong. Mm -hmm. So uh, considering that, how do you compare, for example, your model and uh, sec to sec LSTM? So do you so if LSTM, for example, makes one token wrong? Do you consider that wrong overall, or in your case, how do you compare? Uh, it is wrong overall. Uh, so, uh, point is uh, the whole um, idea from um, for code it was the seek to seek or sequencer model. Those were those usually work very well. However, there is a one crucial bottleneck there in their performance is that if they make 